Good morning and a very warm welcome to you all here today. Let us feel inspired and enriched by our time together as we worship God and we continue with our call to worship. Where shall we find you, O God? Where shall we find you, O God? Where shall we find you, O God? We shall find you here. Let us now stand to sing our first hymn from CH4, number 59, O Come and Let Us to the Lord. to marvel at the wonders of creation and to see you in them all, including the people we meet. Lord, we are guilty of not paying attention and missing out on all the times we could have seen in you. 
We confess that we do not always take time to notice the world around us or to look for you in it. Forgive us and help us to make wise choices going forward, to make time to look for you and see you in the world. As we begin to see you everywhere, may that change our way of responding to the people and situations that come our way. May we learn to love as Jesus loved and care and share all we have as he did. We ask these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, all you young people. Good to see you. I've got something to show you. I've got a box. <laughs> so here's the question. If I asked you to go and find God and put him in the box, would you be able to do it? No, you couldn't do it. Is that because he's too big that he wouldn't fit? Yeah? Is that because he's so strong that we couldn't hold him in there? Yeah? Yeah? Oh, here's another reason why we can't put God in a box and keep him trapped. Because God has got to be on the move all the time. He's got to be with everybody, everywhere. And so we can't keep God in a box. Because God needs to be on the move. But you can keep God in your heart. And if you keep God in your heart, everyone that you meet will also meet God. God is on the move in you and because of that you can show people how much God loves and cares for everybody by being helpful, by being kind and we show just how wonderful God is by sharing God's story and by sharing Jesus' story with others. So we can't and shouldn't keep God in a box, but we keep him in our hearts. And now we're going to stand and sing a great chorus from Junior Praise, Joy is the flag flying high. And Marion, we're going to sing this one through twice. Let's stand and sing and let's do all the actions. <laughs> Thank you. 
1 to 14a. God's promise to David. After the king was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in the house of Cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David that this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent in my dwelling. For I I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of the rulers whom I command you, to my shepherd, my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell me, my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like all the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them so that they can have a home of their own, and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore, as they did at the beginning, and have done so ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and your rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. We now stand and sing together a hymn from CH4, number 6 to 4. In Christ there is no east or west, and we're singing it to the tune St Magnus.
Now for someone who relishes PE and likes to run up and down, play netball and do athletics when I was younger, music and movement became, was a complete and utter shock to the system. Picture the scene. In the gym hall, the entire class in our PE kits and we got this. Some posh lady from the BBC urging us to stretch on our tippy toes as high as we can and become sunflowers. <laughs> or trying to shape our body into great big trees with wonderful outstretched branches. And here was the clincher. To shape yourself into a capital letter. And in my case, in our class, we're asked to shape ourselves into a capital R. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate it, but I would challenge you in a darkened room to have a go. <clears throat> Can you tell I wasn't impressed with this new part of the curriculum? The idea, of course, was to get us to move in such a way as to stretch and move with the music artistically, as well as this subtly, to in introduce impressionable children to a lighter classical music. It still haunts me to this day, but I do like classical music. The idea of being on the move can be a bit of a love-hate thing. Nobody likes being stuck in a rut, but we all like our familiar home comforts around us. Having adventures and exploring new horizons is balanced by the thought that there is no place like home. In our scripture reading today, King David has established his kingdom and united it. He has brought together the warring factions among the tribes of Israel and seen off their enemies. He has founded a new capital city, Jerusalem. He has remembered the God of Israel. He has danced in his excitement at the nearness of God. And then he remembered that the God of Israel had no permanent home, whereas he, King David, lived in a palace. What kind of house should God live in? What woodwork or stonework? What glass or metalwork? What gold and silver and rubies and diamonds and emeralds and all the expensive beauty of the world would be fit enough to house God? What fabrics and textiles would you use? Who would do the flowers? In our own lives, the question of housing is crucial. Shelter is essential to our survival as a species. The quality and safety of our homes matters. We need a roof over our head. It is why seeing people in our streets who clearly have nowhere to live, for whatever reason, challenges us to think why and what we might do about it, like supporting the Bethany Trust or participating in the annual social bike sleep out to make our government take note of the homeless issue. Oh, and by golly, the sleep out is Guy Cole, and there's a few people in Colbert Harwood that have experienced that and supported that. David sees God homeless, carried around in a box from place to place. Surely God should be in something grand, permanent, glorious. God says, no, God is on the move. Temples will rise and fall. Synagogues and churches will come and go. But God is on the move. Every time, every time we try to pin God down or box God up, 
God is on the move. Every time we say, this is what God is like, and this is how God will stay, God is on the move. It's wonderful. It's frightening. It's unsettling. It's glorious. However much we try to contain God in a box, or in a building, or in stained glass windows, or church furniture, or communion cups, or pieces of music, or doctrine and practice and tradition and history and attitudes, God is on the move. And I've often wondered whether that makes God absolute or relative. But it certainly makes God impossible to pin down and define. That was attempted at Calvary on a wooden cross and afterwards in a stone tomb. And God got out of that too. God is on the move. From the first verses of the Bible where God is on the move over the face of the unformed world, through walking in the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day, to the journey with Abraham through deserts to the Promised Land, to Moses and the Israelites through the wilderness out of Egypt, to Elijah in his lonely cave, hearing the voice of God moving nearby in a whisper. God is on the move. In Jesus, God keeps on moving. Journeys to and from Bethlehem at the Nativity, in the flight to Egypt, returning to Mary's hometown of Nazareth, travelling around the lakeside, walking over the waters at Galilee, up and down mountains and to lonely places, on the road to Jerusalem and into the courts of Herod and the high priests and Pilate, through the city streets carrying a cross, into a stone tomb and out of it again. God is on the move in Jesus. And whenever God is on the move in Jesus, God encounters people. When God is on the move in Jesus, whether in the heart of things or out there on the fringes where nobody much goes, God in Jesus, on the move, encounters people. Usually people in need. Usually people not too sure about what they wanted and needed. Usually people everyone else had walked away from. But here, on the fringes, on the outskirts of life, these sheep without a shepherd encounter Jesus. God on the move. So it's no surprise that one of the names given to Jesus in Matthew's story of Jesus' birth is Emmanuel, God with us. During the COVID pandemic, which we are still experiencing, God is on the move and has been with us throughout, journeying beside us all. We have seen him in action in many ways. God has to be on the move because God is seeking people out. God is looking for those who are tired, afraid, doubting, angry, isolated, grieving, lost. Some of those may have found their way to a temple, but not all. Some of those may have found a way to church, but not all. It remains one of the great opportunities and great challenges for all faith communities today. Yes, we want people to come to church and be involved and share in the things that we do and the things that we like. Sometimes they will surprise us and manage to make it here on a Sunday morning. But for others, not so sure, not so interested. Might it be that what we are being called to do is find ways to get out there to them and tell them about the things that we are doing or better than that, invite them in to something. Not with any expectations on our part, but simply being the agents of a God who is on the move out there in our community. When I was in placement 
in Edinburgh. An event was held in Softon Park, which I was told about. There was a group of churches in that area of Edinburgh who put up a big tent. And during the day, they organised activities for children. And at night time, activities for families. Some old ideas, some new ones. It was well attended. But for all the people who were inside the tent, there were many sitting outside. They were all watching. They were interested, but they were not sure. What was going on for the likes of them? As one lady said to one of the ministers present, she watched the coming and going. Don't you have to be like a Christian to get in? She asked. I wonder if people passing this building ask, or our buildings ask the same question. Is it for the likes of them? What do you have to believe in to come in? What's expected of you? What's not expected of you? In all of that, I find myself asking, where is God? Where is this God on the move in our community amongst all the people out there? The people who are uncertain about coming in and finding them, just in case they're judged or made to feel unwelcome, or something else that has built up for whatever reason in their misconceptions about a church and what it does and what it is. It is not that God isn't on the move within this church. God is. But that same God is also on the move in our community and within our county and within our country. And that same God is seeking to find ways for those inside the church to meet up with those outside the church, to learn from each other and to share with each other. God only sees windows and doors through which God moves to reach the people on both sides. There are times when people need shelter and sanctuary and safe places in which to help and hope and catch the breath. There are times when people need to gather to celebrate, to learn or mourn or work together for a good cause that makes the world a better place. May this continue to be such a place where God is on the move in our worship, in our service, in our encountering Jesus. But there are also times when we need to go out once more beyond these walls, back to family and friends, back to neighbours and colleagues, taking with us what we have encountered here, the blessing, the love, the questions, the support, the encouragement, and find that as we go out into the world, our God on the move goes with us, before us, helping us to bring the encounter of Jesus to the people we meet, through what we say and what we do. God on the move is not trapped inside this church box. God on the move is not shut outside this church box. But God is on the move, bringing about encounters, meeting people on the edges and at the heart of things, and bringing blessing wherever he goes, to us, to everyone. It's wonderful, it's frightening, it's unsettling, it's glorious. God on the move, get ready to meet him. Amen. I'd like to thank you for your continued support through the giving of your offerings. And if you didn't get a chance to place your offering in the plate as you came in, you can do so at the end of the service.
let's come together in prayer. God of love, thank you for the vast universe you have created for us to enjoy. Thank you for the mixture of beauty and fragility that makes up the world we know. You are present in all of it and experience the joy and pain that ebbs and flows throughout the universe. Lord, we are grateful for all that brings us joy and laughter, for friends and family, for homes and financial security, for health care and education, for peace and a stable government. Lord, we are all too aware that other people are not so fortunate and we bring our prayers for them before you today. For those people who have no roof over their heads, who do not have a table, let alone food to put on it. For those people whose lives are affected by walls that keep them out and are barriers to their daily living. For those people whose doorways do not protect them from intruders looking to steal from them or harm them. Lord God, we ask you to step into the midst of their lives, to hold and help them and comfort them. For those people who look out of their windows but refuse to see the pain and suffering right before their eyes, Lord God, we ask you to open their eyes and hearts that they too may be filled by compassion for others. Lord, you live everywhere and in everyone. Do not let us forget to seek you in our neighbour, to follow in the way of Jesus, by feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, taking care of the poor, the bereaved and the sick, making sure that all people have a place to live where they feel safe and a place where they belong. May your home in our hearts and help us to share your love with everyone. Amen. Our final hymn today is from Mission Praise and it's a hymn that not all of you know so we're going to have a karaoke session as we stand and sing along to a, a, a video and just give it loudly and enjoy. It's called Rejoice. Let's start.
as you go out into the world, our God on the move goes with you, before you, helping to bring the encounter of Jesus to the people you meet, through what you say and what you do. Go in peace and show all whom you meet how wonderful God's love is, and the blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you today and forevermore. Thank you.